If you've ever looked out at the night sky and seen the Milky Way, you might see this smattering of dense stars across the night sky. What you're actually looking at is the rest of our galaxy. Here on Earth, we are, we're flying around on this rock in space in the middle of a solar system surrounding a sun, uh, surrounding a star, and that star is one of many within this galaxy, the Milky Way. Um, it's a little bit wild to think about how small we are in the grand scheme of things. Um, within the Milky Way, we're about here, and we're spinning around um, a black hole at the center of our Milky Way. Um, and when you look out at the night sky, what you're seeing really doesn't go past the boundaries of this circle right here. It's We're not seeing that much of our own galaxy. In this lesson, I'm going to cover how our universe was formed as well as our solar system and sort of put things into perspective and uh, pave the way for us to learn more about the planet that we live on. So the formation of the universe. The leading theory for the formation of our universe is the Big Bang Theory. Um, and this is the idea that 13.77 billion years ago, our universe formed from a singularity. A singularity is just a point where all matter, energy, and space exist in one single point. And 13.77 billion years ago, all of space, matter, and energy expanded rapidly. Um, this was a sudden expanse of that space, matter, and energy in that one tiny point. And it was the creation of space rather than the filling of space. And that's really hard for us uh, as meager humans to wrap our heads around, I think. Um, because when we think about the Big Bang, maybe we think of an explosion, um, but really there was nothing to explode. There was no matter to explode. It really was just the rapid expansion of space and matter and energy. Uh, something important to note is that the universe is still expanding today. In fact, scientists believe that the universe is accelerating in its expansion. So we're actually, it's expanding faster than it was previously. In this diagram, you can see the beginning of the Big Bang, uh, this rapid expansion or inflation period, uh, early nebula forming, first galaxies forming, um, and as the universe ex expands, the distance between those galaxies increases. And you can see present day is about right here. And scientists believe that the expansion of the universe is just going to continue to accelerate. Here's another example of that same diagram where we see the initial Big Bang, a very rapid expansion. I like this diagram because it shows exactly how fast that expansion was in the beginning. Um, and what we see at about 375,000 years, which is in terms of deep time, that's pretty soon after the Big Bang, um, we actually see this afterglow of cosmic microwave background signals. Um, and we can observe these today. I actually, I know people who are actively working on these. Um, we have these microwave detectors um, on the South Pole that are able to take snapshots of uh, these microwave patterns and what they are is they look like maps of the of the sky in its infant form in its early form um, and so what what these actually are showing is that these red or warmer colors illustrate um, more density so more matter packed into that space there so um, you can imagine that there were molecules elements and molecules um, collecting in uh, these places where it was warmer or redder so how do we know that the um, that the universe is expanding at all? Um, this kind of goes back to something that we call the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is best, in my opinion, best illustrated by sound. Um, if you've ever heard a train go past you while it was blowing its horn, you might have experienced that the sound sounded as if it were a higher pitch as that train was coming towards you. And as the train passed you, that sound actually, the, the, the pitch lowered, and that sound kind of uh, went from being high pitch to low pitch as that train went past you. Um, if that train were to stand still, you might just hear that tone uh, stay the same. What's happening is, as the train is moving towards you, 
the sound waves are actually being compressed and it gives the impression that the frequency of those waves is higher. Um, they're, they're coming at you at a higher frequency. So the sound sounds higher pitched. As that train moves away from you, those waves become further spaced out and the pitch lowers. So something similar is actually happening with waves of light. And this is how we know that the universe is expanding. Um, I like to think about the universe as being like um, a dough ball. If you were to bake bread full of, in this example, there raisins, but you know, pick your poison, whatever you want to put in that bread, it's up to you. Um, but if you were to put something in your bread, maybe nuts or some other dried fruit, um, those fruits or nuts, they would be relatively compact in the beginning. As you put that dough ball in the oven, the dough would start to expand. And similarly, all of those uh, nuts or raisins or whatever's in there, they're all going to move away. They're all going to expand out and move away from one another. That's sort of what's happening with our universe. All of the galaxies within the universe and all of the matter within the universe is moving away from one another. So the way that we know this, again, is with light. So if something is moving toward us, the light spectrum that it gives off appears to be more on the blue end of the visible spectrum. The visible spectrum is down here from about purple to red. This is what our eyes can see. If something is moving away from us, it tends to shift toward red. Now, um, somebody who is standing here, this observer right here, is looking at this moving light source. They're not going to observe any of this Doppler effect. They're not going to see the object uh, shifting toward red or toward blue. This person um, who is experiencing that light moving toward them, that light's going to appear to be blue shifted because it's moving toward them. This person on the right is going to experience that light um, shifted more toward the red end of the spectrum. So what we see when we look out at the stars is that these stars are red shifted and they're actually moving away from us. Our sun, we don't experience that because we're actually circling around our sun, right? It's not, we're not really moving away or toward it. Um, but if we look at distant galaxies, we see that the, those galaxies are actually shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. So if we zoom out and we look, uh, we've looked at sort of our Milky Way that we see in the sky. We've talked about what that looks like. It's this revolving disk. Um, our galaxy. We're just a very, very small part of that. If you zoom out even further, um, there are many, many galaxies out there just like ours. Most of them are disc shaped like ours. Um, and most of them are disc shaped like ours. In fact, um, there are estimated to be about 200 billion galaxies out there. And there are more stars in the universe than there are the number of sand grains on Earth. So let that sink in. We are just a very, very small part of the universe. Okay, let's talk about the formation of our solar system. We have the Milky Way galaxy, and our solar system is a very, very small portion of that. We know that we have the Sun and our eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But how did our solar system develop? Well, the best theory that we have so far is the nebular theory. This is how we went from being a cloud of gas and dust in the sky um, right after the Big Bang uh, to being a solar system with eight planets surrounding a star. When the nebula was that initial cloud of gas and dust, that gas is made up mostly of it was made up of hydrogen and helium, um, and the dust was mostly mineral grains, ice crystals, and organic particles. Before our nebula collapsed into a disk, uh, it might have looked something like this. Uh, we have seen some really beautiful imagery of nebulas in our universe. Um, many have been uh, captured by the Hubble telescope. And this one is particularly beautiful. Uh, and this is what our nebula may have looked like before it collapsed into um, our disk. So what's happening is we have our initial disk of dust and, uh, and gas, and then it, uh, it eventually flattens out into this disk. And this is happening because of gravity. The particles are wanting to cling to one another. They have a gravitational pull to one another. And ultimately, we have our planets forming. 
So this is really a cool simulation of the formation of our solar system. So you'll see that uh, matter starts out fairly evenly spaced. The red zone is higher density of matter, um, and the cooler colors are lower density. And that matter goes from being fairly evenly spread out to collecting in little bits because it's, the matter is gravitationally attracted to itself. So to summarize, the universe formed at about 13.77 billion years ago. If you think about uh, when our Earth was formed, which was 4.65 billion years ago, 13.77 billion was quite a long time ago. Um, our best theory for explaining the formation of the universe thus far is the Big Bang Theory, which remember isn't so much of an explosion as just a rapid expansion of space and matter and energy. Um, our universe is still expanding, and that expansion, like I said before, it appears to be accelerating, so it's expanding even faster than it was previously. Um, and our solar system is one of many uh, in the Milky Way galaxy. There are many, many stars and many solar systems um, that are part of our Milky Way galaxy too. Uh, and the formation of our solar system, if you look at that smaller scale of the solar system, that is best explained by nebular theory, going from that uh, amorphous cloud of dust and gas, um, and then gravity causing those particles to cling to one another and eventually form our eight planets. I hope that you learned something from this video, and in the next video we're going to be talking about the formation of the Earth. I'll see you then.